Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hipnips podcast episode 27. My name is Hannah and you can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. Um, and I normally put the show notes for these episodes on the blog, which you can find at um, rosehipnipspodcast.blogspot.com. And another place now where you can find me is on Etsy, where I sell some of my hand-dyed yarn. You can see some of those back here. And on Etsy, my shop is called Rosehip Island. So you're welcome to come and have a look. I think they are all the places. We do have a Ravelry group for the um, podcast, and you can find that just um, by searching for Rosehip Knits Podcast. So please come and join us there and join me or follow me and friend me in any of those places i just love it when um people get in touch with me so welcome everyone it's been a couple of weeks or so since the last episode we're now in 2016 and um i know i i go on about it every episode but yes the summer is just really really hot here and we're enjoying um uh, summer break and swimming and um, yes, just summer activities and we're having a lovely time. Today I have a huge glass of iced tea to drink um, to keep me cool and um, yes I have the house to myself for a couple of hours so I thought I'll take the opportunity to um, record and show you a few things that I have been doing lately. So if there's any new viewers out there, thank you for giving this podcast a go. Um, I am a Swedish mum of two little girls who live in the northern part of Tasmania, Australia. And um, yes, this podcast is about all different types of crafty things, but mainly um, about knitting, some spinning, some sewing, and hand dyeing yarn. So that's what you can expect when you come and watch the podcast. Thank you to all of you lovely people that return and um, watch the new episodes. And of course, thank you to anyone who's um, checking the podcast out for the first time, like I just said. And um, yes, thank you for anyone who's taken the time to send me messages and um, having a look at the Ravelry group and all those things that just um, I really enjoy. <laughs> Again, I am recording on my phone. It seemed to work quite well last time, so um, I'll keep doing that. And um, yes, as always, please, any feedback is really welcome, very welcome. I um, do put a thread up in our Ravelry group for each episode, so if you have any comments about the episodes or anything I've been talking about, um, let me know in the thread or just send me a private message on Ravelry. Uh, I should also say a big thank you to anyone who checked out my shop on Etsy. Uh, it's really lovely and um, I am really enjoying having the little shop and I just put a few things up there every now and then and um, yes I have um, it's nice now because I have been dying yarn doing things um, for a long time and I have been selling at some craft markets and things but um, I almost started thinking, oh, I would really like to try that and I'd like to do that, but I do have so much stuff in my stash, I'm not going anywhere to sell things, so I will just won't do it. And uh, now I don't have to stop myself when I feel like I want to explore something with my hand dyeing because I have a place um, where I can sell to those who are interested. So it's it's been really good. Okay, so today I'll show you some of my knitting that I have been doing, even though we've had really hot weather. I have, um, I 
don't have anything I've finished, but I'm working on three small projects. I have been doing um, some sewing um, on my own and with my mum, who's still here. And um, I have been doing a little bit of dyeing, so I'll show you a few um, things, um, a few dyeing related things, uh, yarn dyeing related things. And um, I think first up, I'll announce the winners of our Undyed Along. The Undyed Along, um, we started in November and it ran until 10th of January. And I closed the thread for the finished objects when it was pretty much the end of Sunday to 10th everywhere in the world. And um, yes, it was great. I really enjoyed this um, along. There were some really great projects. And um, I know it's, it's a little bit of a tricky one because most people like to knit and craft in lots of beautiful colors so i knew that um it would be a bit of a challenge to get a lot of people to join in but um i was surprised there was um still a lot of projects we had i think 33 or 34 entries in the finished object thread and there was a lot of chatter in the chatter thread so that was great i did draw the winners, because we have two winners, I did draw them just before I sat down to record because I used my phone and that's what I'm recording on. So let's go ahead and announce the winners. So I told you previously um, about the yarn that Meg from Atelier Yarn donated for this cow. So that was the prize in this beautiful red colorway. And last time I did I show this? No, I didn't. I only put it on Instagram and in the Ravelry thread. I made this project back to go along with the skein of yarn. Put that away because it's still in the plastic. Um, so I made this project bag to go along with it. Um, it's just a line drawstring bag. And um, you can see the fabrics there. And my mum embroidered um, just freehand a little rose hip on there. A little bit of a special touch. Um, so yes, we made that um, and really enjoyed making it. So that will go along with the skein of yarn. And then um, Christy of the Layla Caroline Design. She uh, kindly donated a pattern, so I will I drew a second um, person for that pattern. And the pattern is the rainbow sprinkles hat pattern, and I I'm actually working on one of those, so I'll I'll show you my version of that in a little bit. But anyway, let's go ahead and um, I'll announce the winners. So the winner of the bag and the skein of yarn is Tokyo City Girl, who had five entries in this Undyed Along, and it was number 27 that I drew. And that entry, entry was a grey hat that um, Tokyo City Girl made for her husband. So congratulations and please PM me your postal address so I can send that price out to you. And then for the pattern, um, I drew for a second person in the FO thread and the person um, that will receive the pattern from Christy is Yarn Poetry. And she had four entries in this Undyed Along and it was number 33 out of 34. So 33, post, th post 33 was a, um, like a yarn bowl, or bowl made out of yarn. I think it's crocheted. Um, so congratulations, Yarn Poetry. You will um, receive that pattern. And I think I'll just get in contact with um, Christy and she will um, 
send that to you in Ravelry um, once you have p and me to let me know that you know that you won. So yes, very exciting. And um, I have been thinking about a new um, cow to start. And I, I think I'll talk about that later on in this episode. So I forgot that I actually um, finished something since we last talked. So I had to run uh, inside to get it. Um, it was my daughter's birthday. She turned three. And no, she didn't turn three. She turned two on the third. Anyway, I showed you last time. I made her this little skirt. And um, to go with that, I made this um, beautiful ca um, cardigan, which is the French Flautist cardigan. I'm just um, buttoning it up. Um, so this is French Flautist cardigan by Leila Caroline Designs. This is Christy, and I completed that. For my daughter to receive it on her birthday so I made this in the Bendigo Woolen Mills Stella which is the bamboo wool this is the amethyst colorway uh, I was lucky to find the buttons in my button stash I think I actually got them at an op shop some time ago and I thought I probably will need those buttons eventually and I did so that was perfect um, so it blocked out really well and it fits perfectly I'll um, probably insert a photo of my daughter wearing it she unwrapped it on the morning of her birthday and she wanted to wear it straight away and she wore it until it was just too hot to wear it so that was really a, um, a very successful project <clears throat> and um, I don't think Christy has published the pattern yet, but it should not be too far away and I'll let you know when that has been published. <clears throat> but um, I really recommend the cardigan uh, to knit. I did the two-year-old size <clears throat> and it actually looks like my daughter has a bit of growing space in it, but she's, um, she's a small girl. Okay, so that's um, what I finished. And then... I'll show you the socks again that I have been working on for the last few episodes. I have been knitting on my self-striping socks. And I can't remember, I probably have not put a lot of rows onto these. So it's my self-striping and I did um, put the other skein of this in my Etsy shop and together with another skein that I had dyed self-striping and um, they're now on their way to Queensland so they got snapped up quickly which is great so yes I have been knitting a bit of those they're in my uh, New Zealand sock base and I have a bit further to go and then I think I'll put in a um, afterthought heel or maybe officially kiss heel I'm not sure I'll see when I get to that point I have that in my lovely bag from Ganache Yvonne and the other socks that I am working on I have in this bag that my mum made some cool fish on <laughs> and these are my Christmas Eve cast on socks only just cast on <laughs> and didn't do much more with uh, on Christmas Eve. I'm doing these two at a time and I'm using the bootstrap pattern from um, the knit knitting, no, from the Sock Architecture book by Lara Mule. And this is the yarn that Sandra of Sandra's Craftfulness dyed up for me. And it's a 
I think silk, linen and wool blend and I'm really enjoying knitting that up but I have not again put a lot of time on those socks and then I did cast on something new I was going to do a new test knit for Christy who designed the cardigan and um, I was a bit late starting so she's already published a pattern and this is the rainbow sprinkles hat and um, that was the, the prize for the undyed long so this has been published and um, this is my version of it I'm only maybe 10 rows into the the shard again it's a um, ribbed cable cast on I think it's called which I really like for a nice edging um, so you can't really see very well but what I'm using is a purple click heat and country 12 ply and to go with that I am using the I think it's a jet click heat and jet maybe um, this yarn that I died in my tutorial that I did a few episodes back I can't remember which episode it was but it was when I did just a photo tutorial on how I die with food dyes and this is um, what I died for that tutorial so I had oh, I have oops, sorry a bit close the skeins look like this and I had 350 gram skeins of that um, so when I dyed it I did not use enough acid because I'm used to using acid dyes um, when I then did the food dyes for this uh, it just was not enough acid so I actually gave it a bath in hot water and citric acid and then I washed it again and it was fine um, it does not have any bleeding of colour now so I did that So that's that hat and it's a really quick knit and I should have it done in not too long. It's just a little bit hot during the day to knit on very bulky things. So that's the knitting I have to show you. It's just not really the season I guess for doing a lot of knitting in wool. And um, my studio, my craft room has been taken over by sewing and you might not be able to see it well you can probably see normally I have my sewing machine on the table back here but the sewing machine is actually on the big table in front of me now and uh, yes the table has been cleared we've been using it for cutting fabric and sewing and everything so um, yes things um, time has been taken over by sewing really and a little bit of dyeing that I'll show you later on So I showed you the price that the bag that I did um, sew on and then I wanted to continue making similar bags because I really like I really like this type of bag. I've made a few before for swaps that I've participated in and now I have I think come up with the size that I really like. Um, because it's a size to be bigger than just a sock project but it's an easy take along bag and um, it does stand up but you can also sort of flatten it out so it doesn't take a lot of space if you don't want it to um, it's drawstring so you won't get um, your project stuck in it and uh, yes I just really like this type of bag um, so now that I, I, I got sort of the the size and everything down to what I, I like I thought I'll continue making a few and 
Um, I did think about putting them in my Etsy shop, so I, I, I might do that. I so far have one that is, is basically done. Um, and it's this one. I just need to go and get a um, drawstring um, for it. But that's the same size bag. It just has more different fabric. It's totally lined and reversible. And um, yes, yeah, so that's what I've been <laughs> spending a lot of time on, just figuring out these bags. And um, yes, I have several more um, fabrics and uh, I've sort of put together the lining and the outside and different fabrics that I want to use together in, in bags. So that um, should be coming up in a little bit, maybe in a few weeks, I, I'll try um, to put a couple in my Etsy shop. So, because I, um, it's a really nice thing to be able to vary what you do. And um, especially now in summer, sewing is really nice. So, um, I really enjoy making the bags. So, I'll, I'll continue with that. And uh, that's probably the sewing. I have been working a little bit more on a dress for me with mum. But um, nothing finished quite yet. We just sort of, um, time been taking up by other types of sewing. We're making new curtains for my daughter. And um, yes, the time for our sewing is just not, um, hasn't happened yet. <laughs> So that brings us to dyeing. I um I had someone ask me if I was going to have some mini skeins in my shop on Etsy, and I thought yes, um, I'd love to make sets of of minis, and I had some partial skeins already that I had dyed that I couldn't sell as a full skein so I, I made a few minis of those and I've actually been um, including a mini in the orders that I've sent out and um, I I think I had three different colorways ready in a, a few minis and then I dyed up another two skeins and made some minis out of those so I have some sets of five minis and I actually I'll show you and I put them up on my shop and answer I was I'm not really sure about sorry a bit close again um I was a bit unsure about the quantities people would like in a mini skein how many grams and how many mini skeins in one set Things like that so I had a little bit of a look around I asked people and I decided on doing mini skeins that are well they're at least 10 grams each some of them are even 12 grams and I did my seaweed colorway I have one of a kind pink with a bit of green speckles going through it. This is my snowman colorway. It has speckles of blue, orange, and red. And this is one of a kind, just a blue, gray. And then my rosy bin Holland colorway. So I had enough to make three sets of these and I put them in the Etsy shop. But I'm not sure that that's the preferred way to buy minis. I'm not sure anyone who has any thoughts or opinions about sets of minis, um, please let me know. I did put them up and I did make a note that this is basically something that I see as something you can sort of add on. If you 
buy a skein of hand dye, a full skein, this might be something fun to add to your order. Because just getting the mini skeins, well, you, then you might prefer a larger set. So I, I did dye up a few more skeins, full skeins, that I, my plan was to make more minis of and make larger sets of minis. Um, and these are just a few that I dyed. A sort of tonal purple, a grey and turquoise. And this is a grey with some red and green undertones. So I was going to make these into minis, but then I thought, no, once you start cutting into your full skeins and make minis, there's, there's no return, is there? So I thought I'll leave them like this for a while and I'll make up my mind. I'll see what people think about mini skeins, what size, how many in each set and things like that. So um, I have them ready to make minis. I have more of, of these colours. So that's six different, but I, I'm not sure. I, I really, really love you to uh, give me any sort of feedback on minis. I, I don't, I'm not making a Cozy Memories blanket or any sort of um, modular project that needs mini skeins. So I don't have any opinions myself on minis, but I really see them how it can be a fun thing to purchase from an indie dyer. So you get several different colorways um, to try out and add to the project, even to make beanies or socks or anything really, just add a little bit of different colors to a project. Um, so that's another thing I was thinking, What for my minis, I have just used a superwash fingering because I thought, most people probably use them for blankets and things like that, and you don't really need nylon in a blanket. But maybe, you know, people would rather have the, the sock yarn for minis. So please let me know. I just don't know. <laughs> and then, um, the last piece of dyeing I'll, I'll show you is um, some self striping that I did. So I had another two skeins up in my Etsy shop um, and they sold straight away, which is great. And then I had another one that was still drying at that time and it's now all skeined up and ready. And I inserted a photo of, of the colour sequence of it. But um, yes, I tried to do it a little bit differently to, than I normally do it, and um, it worked out quite well. So I just love the way they look when they're all skeined up. So that's another one that I will list on Etsy eventually. And now I don't know when I'll be able to do more self-striping. I'm out of that base that I've been using for the self-striping. And it looks like it, the supplier has sold out of it, so I'm not sure when it will be back in stock. So I'll just see. Um, I can't quite keep away from the dye pods. It's so much fun. You get a thought of a colour and a colour combination. You just want to add it to a skein of yarn. But um, the Etsy shop is pretty well stocked now. And um, yes, I'll might try to stay away from the dye pods for a little while and do some knitting and sewing and other things. Um, yes, again, I have I have not caught up on the podcast that I normally watch. I am, um, which makes it feel a bit odd to record myself because I normally podcast and feels a little bit like I'm adding my bit to the conversation online. So normally I have been watching a few different podcasts and I feel like I'm basically talking back and you know they've shown me what they are doing so now it's my turn to show them and now I feel like I'm I've missed part of conversations and I'm just sort of adding things out there and I'm not really sure <laughs> what's going on so um well yes I'm, I'm still trying to catch up 
I did um, watch one new podcast. I took the time to actually watch one of the episodes of a new podcast, and that is the Shara Made podcast, uh, an Australian podcast. And um, yes, I, I really enjoy that. So that's a great po podcast. So check that out if you haven't already. And um, but apart from that, I'm still like two, even three episodes behind on most podcasts. So, and I'm a bit silly. I don't sort of just go and watch the last one. I want to watch them all in order. So I'm still watching pre-Christmas episodes of some podcasts. So I'll get there eventually, I hope. Um, but that's the knitting, the sewing, the dyeing, things that I have been doing. Um, I'm back at work now, so um, I sort of have every second day just sort of summer holiday, going to the pool, enjoying summer, and every second day I'm back in the lab processing samples and um, yes, not feeling the summer at all. <laughs> Sorry, it's really hot, so I'm trying to stay hydrated. Uh, what I like to talk about now. The last thing is a new knit along or craft along and um, since I've been I've been thinking a lot about the mini skeins and um, I have a few extras I thought that I would really like to host a mini along and for the mini along I was thinking not only not only using minis or doing a cozy memories blanket or something like that I'm thinking also mini as in making small items anything that you consider something that would fit under mini so anything made out of minis mini size and it can be knitted crocheted um, I don't know if you can can you sew something really small maybe um so if you're making a modular project like a, a a blanket an entry would be not one entry per mini skein but you can say this is my blanket that i'm making out of minis and i've added this square and um, during the niche long time frame i think that's how i'll do it yes or if you're just using minis for something totally different uh, or like I said making just something a mini size so that's what we'll do the this knit along crochet along craft along <laughs> we'll start now as soon as this episode is up I'll have a thread in the Ravelry group one for shatter and one for finished objects and I think we will give ourselves plenty of time so we will run until end of Feb, so end of February. So that will give us a month and a half, something like that. Um, yes, yeah, so any suggestions of things that we could potentially do, like using minis for socks or uh, making little crocheted um, little animals or something yeah just um, put that in the thread in Ravelry and uh, we'll see what sort of projects we can come up with and I'm really looking forward to that again to look through the finished object thread and hopefully a lot of you will join I already have prices so I also made this bag when I was playing around with different bags so it's just a lined zipped bag a different bit of a different um, size but oh, I don't know you could put it maybe a larger pair of scissors in there or some mini skein project maybe so this will be a prize together with a set of minis five minis so five ten gram minis um, I will add to this bag and that will be one price so um, I'll show you the minis next time because I'll probably make up a new set of minis for this price 
So, um, yes, think of projects that would go under the mini theme and um, please join our um, knit along. I'm not sure what I'll be doing, but I still have my mini skeins from Andre Sue Knits that I would really, really like to make into um, a project. Someone suggested that I knit some socks, like scrappy yarn socks, and I might do that. So thank you everyone for joining me in my studio today. Um, it's been great um, sharing some crafts with you again. And um, I'm now going to go and um, make the most of the rest of the day. And please, if, um, if you like to see what I am working on, um, a good way is to follow me on Instagram or friend me on Ravelry and um, please subscribe to the podcast if it's um, something that you like to watch. So um, I'll leave it at that for this time. Um, take care everyone and um, I'll see you next time. Bye.